One, two, three. Click. Okay, guys, we are back seconds after the last one, uh, which is really good for me because I again it's been a little bit Last episode took months to record. This one seconds after, baby. Let's go. Um, what? Why? In my settings. Sorry guys, this is a terrible start. Um, general. I, I have it set so my mouse shouldn't be showing up. I, I don't know. That's really lame. Uh, but yeah, last time, we summoned the girl, the poster child of the whole series. Also, I found out recently. Wait. Oh, now it's gone. That was weird. I found out recently that they, uh, that I think it was Tight Moon just straight up admitted, like, yeah, we designed Nero as a girl and to look like Saber. To, like trick people into thinking it was Saber so they'd buy the game. And I'm like, you know what? I don't respect you guys tricking people into buying it or trying to, but I respect that you would admit it. With that being said, let's just like jump into the story since it's like, it's going baby, we're going places. She says in a valiant voice, M Master? I only repeat back her words. I don't know who she is or what she's talking about. All I know is that this small girl is the same kind of being as the man outside. Ooh. Gosh darn it, I should have gone slightly further into the episode. So I could get this as this thumbnail. I don't... It depends on if there's anything good in this fight. The girl says nothing and just stares at me silently. How can I put this? The figure in front of me is so special that I forget the situation. That the man outside could come and attack at any second. Who's just out there be- I saw that, my mouse is back! Why? It went away for a second, and I know that like, it disappears if I'm not moving, but like when it was gone for like that like, tiny period, I was sitting there wiggling it around like this, and it was completely gone. I was like, sick. Um... But I just like to imagine Ku's just outside like, uh... Guys, I'm still here, ya. Yeah, you know that, right? You only knocked me away for a second. I'm a professional fighter, I'm just gonna come back in there and stab you both. Feels like the time has just stopped. The uh, time has stopped just around me. The fear of death has disappeared, and the and only the girl fills my vision. Bro, you and weebs everywhere. I, servant saber, have servant saber have come forth in response to your summons. With that many V's back to back, saber was very hard to say. Please give me an order, master. She speaks again. The instant I hear the words master and servant. A pain shoots through my left hand. It's like a hot iron has been placed on my hand. I grab my left hand indistinctively. That must have been the signal as the girl quietly nods her lovely face. From this time forth, my sword shall be with you, and your fate shall be with me. You see, said the thing. Now, our contract is complete. Contract? What are you talking about? Even I have some, even I have some kind of knowledge of magic. I understand what that word means. But the girl doesn't answer me and looks away with the same grace as she had when she nodded. She looks at the door of the shed. There stands the man, his lance ready in his hands. Yo, you guys done making out? Can we start fighting now? She moves faster than I can think. The knightly girl leaps out of the shed without hesitation. Exclamation point. I get up and follow the girl, even forgetting the pain in my body. There's no way that girl will be a match for him. Even armored like that, she is a girl smaller than me. Yo, dude, this fight's epic. Stu- My words are silenced by the sound. I need to move my mouse. Hang on. Give me a moment. Give me just- just a hot Sekirano. What? I can't believe my eyes. This time my head really goes blank. What is she? Come on, give me some sick stuff for the thumbnail, baby. The sound of weapons. The moon is hidden behind the clouds, and the yard has returned to its original darkness. In it, 
Sparks are born from hit steel hitting steel. The lance-wielding man wordlessly attacks the girl who jumped out of the shed, but the girl parries the blow of the lance and knocks away all of the attacks, driving the man back with every blow. I just... I just like that Artoria is just so much stronger than uh, Lancer, than Ku specifically, that uh, even summoned by Shiro with her stats being ridiculously lowered and uh, having like no mana to drop on for a noble phantasm, she can just still hand it to Ku. Or at least I think her her uh, stats are lowered, I believe. I can't believe it. The girl called Saber is overpowering that man. The battle has begun. What happened between me and him earlier wasn't a battle. A battle is a fight between two people who can kill each other. Whatever the difference in skill, if each has a way to kill the other, then you can call it a battle. Their fight, is, their fight is a battle in that sense too. The man's lance that I couldn't even see is thrown with even more power. But the girl parries it with that thing in her hand and closes in on the man. Damn. The man retreats a bit. He holds his lance vertically to protect his ribs as the girl goes for them. Ooh, ooh. Uh, the, the, the gray part wasn't away long enough, gosh darn it. Gah. For the moment, for a moment, the man's lance glows. It was a blow like an explosion. I guess it really was one. The instant the man blocks the thing the girl's holding, the lance in her, his hand glows as if electrified. The man, and even I can tell... The man... And even I can tell what that is. There is a force of magical energy so strong that it is visible. In each of the girl's blows is a terrible amount of magical energy. The outrageous amount of magical energy is penetrating the opponent's weapon just by touching it. Such a thing. It must take such force to just to block it. If you think of the man's lance as an accurate sniper rifle, the blows of the girl are like those of a powerful shotgun. Every time the girl swings, the yard is filled with light. But that isn't what's overpowering the man. Coward, what are you doing hiding your weapon? The man complains while avoiding the girl's fierce attacks. The girl doesn't answer, but only attacks even more with that thing in her hands. You. The man retreats, with not even a chance for a counterattack. It's only natural, because the girl's weapon is invisible. As he cannot sense her rage, range, he would be careless to attack recklessly. Yes, it is invisible. The girl definitely has something in her hand, but as you can't see what shape it is or nor how long it is, you can't tell anything about it. That's fair. She's not that, like, I'm, Jean, I'm pretty sure she's still stronger than him, but it is kind of fair to just be like, yeah, Ku's just, like, mid. He's getting his trash whooped by her. I mean, she does have an invisible weapon. That That's a fair point to make. Perhaps it's totally invisible, as it does not even show up when sparks fly from it. Damn. The man must be having a hard time defending against it, as his moves aren't as sharp. And the girl lets out a voice for the first time. She swings her weapon with more fury. A storm of swing thought paused. The flying sparks remind me of a blacksmith hitting iron. The lance-wielding man blocks them, clucking his tongue. I must say, I admire his skills even though he tried to kill me. The man is blocking invisible blows, watching only the opponent's legs and arms. But that's it. You only need to beat down someone who's gone defensive. As if to say so, the girl steps even closer to the man. Delivers a final blow with all her might as of smashing him down. Don't underestimate me, fool. He must sense as he must see this as his opponent as his opportunity as the man disappears. No, he jumped back, making it look like he disappeared. The girl's blow cuts through the air and destroys the ground, kicking up dust. The blow, swung as a final one, was easily dodged. Idiot, what is she doing? I can tell even from a distance. I don't know about the careful blows from before, but such a big blow won't be able to touch that man. Even that man's body must have been straining under all those attacks, but he suppressed it for an instant and jumped away, as if this blow will determine the victor. Ha! <laughs> the man who jumped back several meters jumps as soon as he lands, as reversing his retreat he jumps at the girl. In contrast, the girl still has her sword in the ground. That opening is irrevocable. The red lance returns in less than a second. The girl twirls her body with the sword still on the ground. So the contest lasts less than a second. The man sees his mistake and tries to hold back, while the girl uses her whole body to execute the blow. Is it just a swing up? Is that what it is? Let us get a better look at that art. Gah. The man was blown away and the girl who blew him away both seemed discontent. 
It's only natural. They each launched their blows to kill the other. Even if they allowed them to escape immediate danger, they were worthless. The distance opens. The two stare at each other silently. What is wrong, Lancer? It would not do your name credit if you just stand there. If you will not come, I can. <laughs> You're going to come and die. I don't mind, but let me ask you first. You're a noble phantasm. Is it a sword? Yo, he's got them cheeks, though. The man glares, as if staring right into her heart. Who knows? It might be a battle axe, or it might be a spear. It might even be a, lo a bow, Lancer. Please, people only shoot swords. They don't swing bows. Hm. Keep talking, Saber. Perhaps it's really funny for... Perhaps it is, it's really funny for him. Man, the one called Lancer lowers his lance. It looks like he's indicating that he doesn't want to fight anymore. Question mark? The girl is puzzled by Lancer's actions, but I know that stance. It, it was used in that fight a few hours ago in the schoolyard. It was a fatal move that was supposed to have ended the show. I'll ask just in case, since this is our first meeting. Do you want to call it even? It's not a bad deal, right? See, that senile master over there is useless, and it so happens my master is a coward. I think it's both of our interests to hold off on this match until we're better prepared. I refuse. You will fall here, Lancer. I see. Geez, all I wanted to do was check things out, you know. I didn't want to stay long once a servant came out. It seems like the air around them distorted. Lancer lowers his stance. A chill runs through the air at that moment. It's exactly like then. The magical energy rumbles in a whirlpool centered on that lands. Noble Phantasm. The girl readies her apparent sword and glares at the enemy in front of her. The girl facing the enemy knows better than I how dangerous he is. Say ya. I'll take that heart of yours. The beast jumps. Lancer instantly disappears appears in front of the girl as if he teleported and thrusts his lance at the girl's feet. It was a bad move, even in my eyes. With the lance already lowered, it would be effective to aim low at the girl. To prove my point, the girl jumps over the lance and moves toward a slash lance right away. At that moment... Gay? With the words themselves charged with magical energy. Bug! Listen, dog, even though that didn't look good on the, the waveforms, I couldn't resist going a little at it, you know? I wanted to go way harder. Just because hearing him say gay bulg is so cool, I was like, I want to do that. Maybe I'll have to play around with my settings uh, so I can actually start yelling things. That would, be, that would actually be a lot of fun. Granted, it's a little lame with them being like separated like this, but whatever. The lance is thrust at the girl's feet, rushes towards her heart. Also, that makes a lot more sense than how it happened in the anime, because he just kind of... I guess he'd like... The whole point is that it reverses reality, so it'll always hit the heart. So it doesn't really matter what he does with it, as long as it hits. I was about to say, it's a little weird in the anime when he kind of, like, throws it. It just kind of automatically targets her, but it still makes sense with how the ability works. Blech. Her body rises into the air. The girl is driven up by the blow, into the air by the blow of the lance, and she crashes down. No, lands on the ground. <laughs> she is bleeding. The girl who hasn't even received a scratch so far is bleeding badly from her chest. A, a curse? No, a reversal of causality. She speaks in pain. I'm surprised too. No, since I saw it from a distance, I can tell better than her that the attack just now is a strange one. The lance was definitely aimed at her feet, but it suddenly changed its course moving strangely in an impossible direction and pierced the girl's heart. But the lance itself has not grown or bent. It looks so natural that it makes me think that the lance was already in her heart. For that reason, it's strange. It's not as simple as lance changing its course and piercing her heart. The lance did not change its course, but changed the means so that the result would be so. The lance thrust with the name carried the the result of piercing her heart as a as a premise. As a premise. Premise. In other words, the process of the results were reversed. As long as there was the result. The lance piercing her heart. The course of the lance was merely something added later to prove that fact. 
that's always been such a cool, like, they gave him, Nasu was like, yeah, I want to give this guy who, like, almost loses every single fight. Well, granted, does he, that's just always the meme, but he kind of wins every time he fights uh, Archer. Either wins or draws. So, I don't know. But they gave him the most broken ability ever. And he doesn't win this Grail War. And I was like, yeah, okay. He just has an auto win button. That's that's what it is. He's like, well, I guess I'm losing. All right, gay bulg pokes right in front of him. Oh, guess you're dead now. An evil thorn that breaks through all defenses. A lance that pierces the heart every time it's used. A weapon that determines your fate just by its use. How can anyone block such a ridiculous attack? However the enemy tries to dodge it, the lance will pierce their heart without fail. That's why the move is fatal. A cursed lance that always pierces the opponents with one thrust. But the girl has evaded it by a small margin. She is wounded, but is not a fatal blow. In a sense, her actions were more impossible than the lance. The instant the lance was thrust, she turned and jumped back with all her might, as if she knew this was going to happen. Either she had incredible luck, or enough divine protection to nullify the curse of the lands. Either way, she avoided a fatal blow and slowly the lance's name. <sighs> the girl catches her breath. The blood that was running so much has stopped, and even her stab wound is healing. I guess that's extraordinary. I knew she wasn't normal, but still, that's too strange. Like her skill, like her skills to fight against Lancer, like the incredible magical energy in each of her blows, and like her body that heals by itself. The girl clearly surpasses Lancer, but that was only up till now. Even if it's healing, her wound is deep. If the Lancer attacks her now, she will be defeated without even being able to defend herself. But with this overwhelming advantage, Lancer doesn't move. He glares at the girl, grinding his teeth so hard that I can hear it. Ugh. You evaded it, Saber. You evaded it, Saber, my fatal gay bulg. A voice that seems to echo from the ground. Gay Bulg, your island's man of light. Lancer frowns. His hostility disappears and he clucks his tongue in annoyance. I screwed up. If I want to use this move, it needs to be fatal. Jeez, I guess being too famous is bad too. The pressure goes away. Lancer doesn't even attack the wounded girl and simply turns his back and moves to the edge of the yard. It is the rule of servants to fight to the death if your identity is discovered. But, unfortunately, my master is a coward. He's telling me to go back since you have evaded my lance. You're running away, Lan- You are running away, Lancer? Yeah. I don't mind if you come after me, Saber. Just be prepared to die when you do. With one bound, Lancer easily jumps over the wall and disappears. Why did Kirai want him to run? Like, I know that like, noble phantasms use a lot of mana. But couldn't he have just thrown another one and then, like, Saber barely lives that one, too, and then he just walks up and ends her? I don't know. He could have tried. Wait, Lancer! The wounded girl starts running to pursue the enemy. It, is she stupid? I run through the yard with all my strength. I think that the girl will go after him if I don't stop her instantly. <coughs> but there's no need for that. When the girl tries to jump over the wall, she clenches her chest and stops. <laughs> I, run to her and I run to her and stare at her. No, I try to approach her, to call out to her, but I forget about it the instant I come near her. To put it simply, everything about her is absurd. Now that, I'm, now that I'm near her, I can tell that the shining armor she wears is really heavy. The old-fashioned cloth is smooth, is a smooth, vivid blue. Is smooth, a vivid blue. That's a weird way to structure that sentence, but it makes sense. No, that isn't what fascinates me. The girl who seems to be a few years younger than me is beautiful. The golden hair lit by the moonlight is finely textured, as if sprinkled with gold dust. The face with some sign of naivety has elegance, and her white skin looks soft. I can't call off to her because I'm fascinated by her beauty, but also for another reason. Why? Because seeing the girl fighting and getting hurt somehow made me mad. No matter how strong she is, or how armored she is, I think it's wrong for a girl to have to fight. All the while I'm fascinated with her, the girl has her hand on her chest, but that ends quickly. The girl lets her chest go and looks up as if the pain has gone away. She stares directly at me. 
I'm not sure how I should talk to her, but I know something about her. The wound is... gone? Even though Mr. Hart Glance stabbed her in the chest, but she's unscathed. I've heard of healing magics, but I didn't see her use anything like that. So that must mean she automatically heals even when she is wounded. Then my brain switches gear. This is no time to be fascinated by her. She's a strange being. I can't let my guard down until I know what she is. Who... are you? I take a half back, a step back as you, uh, Lena. What do you mean? I am the servant Saber. You summoned me, so I did not think you should need to confirm it. The girl answers in a quiet voice. The servant Saber? Yes, so please call me Saber. She replies without hesitation. Her tone is polite yet gentle, and just hearing it makes my head go blank. Hey, what am I getting excited about? I, I see, that's a strange name. I had my burning face with my hand and reply really stupidly. I don't know what else to say. I wouldn't know of anything a such thing to say. Since I asked her name, isn't it natural natural for her to introduce herself? In that case, it would be unpolite to stay silent, silent like this. I'm Shiro. My name is Emiya Shiro, and I live in this house. What am I doing? Are my answers getting stupider? She told me her name, so I should answer her, answer her too. Uh, so I should answer too. I know I'm confused right now. I have to be polite no matter who this is. The girl, Saber, just stares at me without changing her expression. No, wait, I take that back. That's not what I meant to ask you, actually. I know you're not... I know. You are not a formal master, correct? Huh? But you're still my master. As long as we have made a contract, I will not betray you. There's no need for you to be so cautious. Ugh, crap. I can hear her words, but they make no sense to me. All I know is that she's calling me with a ridiculous word like Master. That's wrong. My name isn't Master. Then I shall call you Shiro. Yes, I like the sound of that better. As soon as she says my name, I think my, lit fa my face lit up on fire. Shouldn't you call someone by their last name on a first meeting? Wait a minute. Why are you calling me? Ow. Pain suddenly runs through my left hand. It's burning. The back of my hand is burning. My hand feels like it's on fire, and on it is a strange mark that looks like a tattoo. What the? That is called a command spell, Shiro. It is the three claims on a servant's obedience. In the life of a master, please, do not use it thoughtlessly. Who? Before I can finish with, are you? The air around her changes. Shiro, heal my wounds. She speaks in a cold voice. It seems her attention is on something far away behind the wall, and not on me. But is she expecting me to heal her? Wait, you're asking me? I'm sorry, but I don't know any such difficult magic. Besides, it's already healed. Saber frowns a bit. I think I said something really wrong there. Then, I shall face them as I am now. The generation only healed the outside, but one more fight should not be a problem. One more... one more what? There are two enemies outside. Judging by their presence, it should only take a few seconds to defeat them. Saying so, J Saber jumps lightly. Just like Lancer, she leaps over the wall and disappears outside. I'm left alone in the yard. Enemies outside? As soon as I say it aloud, I realize what it means. Hold on, are you going to fight again? My body starts to move. Without thinking, I run to the gate with full force. I run to the gate. Unlock with trembling hands and jump. Saber, where are you? I search through the dark. The moon is hidden now. Of all times, it is completely dark, but... I hear something nearby. There! I run to the small road with no sign of anyone on it. It all happens in an instant. Saber is confronting a familiar guy in red. Saber runs at the man in red without hesitation. Takes his guard down with one blow and... Easily slashes the man in red. Saber raises her arm to finish him off, but right before the man in red, Red's neck is slashed, he disappears as a magical power as a powerful magic is cast. Saber doesn't stop. She dashes to the person behind the man in red. Easily cuts off the large spell the person launches. What the? I knew she was strong, but this is overwhelming. The spell right now is at the level of intervention magic that I cannot even compare to it. Father could use one as strong as that, but to cast a natural intervention of that power instantly? I don't think even a first-class Marcus could do so. But Saber nullified even that master-class magic. 
The enemy must be Amagus if the magic is decided right there. Amagus' attacks are no use against Saber, but she mercilessly attacks the Magus. The sound of someone falling backwards. The Magus has miraculously dodged Saber's blow, but the enemy now cannot move. Saber corners the enemy and points her invisible sword. My mind freezes. Probably because the moon the, because the moon lights up the scene for an instant. I can tell that the figure Saber is pointing at is human. I can't tell who it is, but the image of Saber killing someone and getting splattered with blood pops on my head. Saber moves. She'll pierce the enemy's throat with the thing in her hand. Stop! Saber! I scream as loud as I can. Her sword stops. Thank god I can't see her sword. Even if her invisible sword isn't wet with the enemy's blood. Don't. Please don't do it, Saber. I address her glaring, preparing myself to do my best to stop her. Why do you stop me, Shiro? She is Archer's master. We have to kill her here. No, Saber has no intention of stopping. She only stopped because I said so, and she is ready to bring her sword down at any time. Uh, I'm telling you to wait. You're calling me master or something, but I don't understand anything at all. If you're going to call me that, I think you should explain things to me first. Saber doesn't answer. She only stares at me in silence. You're doing this in the wrong order, Saber. I still don't understand who you are, but I'll listen if you talk, so please don't do this. Saber is silent, still pointing her sword at the fallen enemy. She looks at me discontentedly. What do you mean by that? Are you demanding ideals, like not hurting anyone unnecessarily? Huh? Not hurting anyone unnecessarily? Well, it is true that we should avoid fights as much as possible, but I'm not so good-natured as the release one who came to attack me. So you're saying do not take life, even if that's of the enemy, correct? I will not obey such an order. An enemy is someone you must defeat. If you still want me to stop, make make me obey with your command spell. I, I'm talking about you. A girl shouldn't be swinging swords around all, all the more so if you're hurt. Oh, wait. I don't even know if it's a sword or not. Huh? Anyway, you're a girl, so you can't do that. So, I've heard that Shiro's sexism isn't real, and he's just doing it as an excuse for people not, like, like, because people, like, uh, people say that Shiro just doesn't want Saber to get hurt for him. But, like, this doesn't have anything to do with that. Like, she's clearly already won. What does it matter if she's a girl in this situation? Uh, I don't, I don't, maybe Shiro's a little problematic for 2004. I don't know. Oh, uh, that's all I'm saying. Saber looks dumbfounded as if taken aback. How long were we standing like that? So, when will Saber-san lower her sword? The figure on the ground suddenly speaks. Saber suddenly returns to concentrating her attention on her sword. Give up. I have no sword to lower in front of an enemy. Even if your master says to lower it? Wow, so even Saber would betray her master, huh? Saber grits her teeth. Saber lowers her sword and relaxes. Saber's hostility disappears, so she must have put away her sword as well. I see. Then can I stand up? Then I can stand up, right? The one on the ground stands up. She looks shameless, brushing her rear. Hey, wait a second. That sulky person is definitely... What? Hey, you... You're Tosaka! Yes, good evening, Emya-kun. You know, I, I, in the last episode I was saying, like, Takeuchi's art has definitely, like, gone better over time. But he's still very good at expressions. I love the expressions he gives everyone. Yes, good evening, Emiyakun. Tosaka re replies with a big smile. Uh, that gets me. If she greets me normally like that, everything that happened up till now seems like a dream, and... No, my head's about to explode. Jeez, how easy would things be if it did? Um, maybe he's just better at drawing girls. Maybe that's why he turns everyone into a girl. Because I just realized, like, the only problem I've had with people is, like, Shiro. But then he still draws Rain great. Like, everything about her looks super good. Saber always looks amazing. But sometimes Archer and Lancer also look a little weird. Sakura's look pretty good so far. So's, uh... Uh, Taiga. Is, wait, no, is that... Oh, gosh, I'm blinking. Ah, whatever. We're moving on. Um, no, well, um, so you're using magic right now, so that means... 
I'm Amagus. Well, we're the same, so it's not something I should need to hide. Ugh. When she replies clearly like that, it makes me seem stupid for asking. Let's talk inside. You don't know anything, right, Emya-kun? So saying, she walks towards the entrance. What? Wait, what are you thinking? And then she turns, and the smile on her face isn't like the previous one. Are you stupid? I'm thinking about a lot of things. That's why I want to talk to you. Emiakun, it's good to be surprised by sudden turns of events, but it could seem sometimes caught but it could sometimes cost you your life if you just don't accept it. If you don't just accept it. Incidentally, do you understand that now is not do you understand that now is one of those times? Ugh, that was terrible. She glares at me. <laughs> it's fine if you understand. So let's go to your place. Tosaka goes through the gate. She's really pissed. It's only natural. She got a sword pointed at her until now. She was almost killed. No, but still. Is it just my imagination, or is she totally unlike how she seemed at school? And I think that's the perfect place to stop. Um, that's about as much as we thought I was going to get done. Um, and it is really weird seeing at this situation, because I was expecting a command spell to be used right there, but it wasn't. Um, so it's really weird seeing things already be different. And now I'm just saying, like, does it really take Archer the entire route to heal? <coughs> Excuse me, that was a little bit of a burp. Did he even show up? Yeah, it did. Okay. Um. Because, like, thing, like the thing that, like, changes between the routes is just, like, Archer gets taken out early in this one, so we can't really dick around with Shiro as much. Um. Yeah, this is interesting. I'm interested to see where it goes. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. I feel like this is gonna sound weird, but I feel like I'm either, like, a master of outros or I'm terrible at them. There's, like, zero in between of, like, that was, like, a mid-outro. It's either, like, that was so well done or it's, like, oh, gosh, you're so awkward. Just end the video, which I'm about to do. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.